in the last section, we were assuming that way, uh, that light is a wave. Because before the 1900s, scientists did believe that electromagnetic radiation existed only as a wave. However, around the turn of the century, scientists started observing some electromagnetic radiation behavior that could not be explained by the wave theory of light. One particular effect that was observed is called the photoelectric effect. And when you shine light on a metal of a particular wavelength, the metal can um, actually eject electrons. You can actually cause a current in the metal by ejecting these electrons by shining particular wavelengths of light. Now, if the wave theory of light was true, then any frequency of light should be able to eject electrons from the metal. However, scientists observed that different metals required different minimum frequencies, different wavelengths of light, um, different frequencies of light to actually get the photoelectric effect to occur. Scientists could not explain the discrepancy, but some mathematicians stepped in and did have a model that could help explain what was going on. So Planck explained the photoelectric effect using math. So Planck is responsible for kind of coming up with this particle description of light. And he first proposed a quantum theory of energy. He said that these metals were not emitting electromagnetic radiation in a continuous spectrum, which is what you would uh, expect if energy were wave-like. He said that metals were emitting energy in small, specific amounts that he called quanta. A quantum is the minimum amount of energy that can be lost or gained by an atom. It's like a packet of energy. It comes in a fixed size. One way to think about this is the staircase model. If you are going upstairs, you can be on this stair or you can be on this stair. You cannot magically hover halfway in between two stairs. You have to commit. You can either be on this stair or you can be on this stair. The classical theory said you could be anywhere. that You had a nice slope, so you could be absolutely anywhere on that nice slope. But with the quantum theory, we said you could be here or you could be here and you cannot be hovering halfway in between. Einstein also used math and he expanded on Planck's theory. He said, hey, we don't have to choose between whether light is a wave or whether light is a particle. Light can be both. He said that electromagnetic radiation can behave both as a wave and as a particle. So you've got this wave-particle duality. Light can be a wave and it can be a particle. You don't have to choose. He proposed the idea of photons. Photons are particles of electromagnetic radiation. So up to this point, we've only ever had waves of electromagnetic radiation, but now we've got particles. And they are particles that have zero mass, but they carry a quantum of energy. So we're building off of what Planck said, and we're combining it with the wave theory. Einstein also indicated that the energy of a photon depends on the frequency of the radiation. So this brings us back, uh, this brings us to Planck's equation. So kind of cycling back to Planck now. Planck related energy and frequency. They are directly proportional. The higher the frequency, the higher the energy. The lower the frequency, the lower the energy. And as I said earlier, X-rays, gamma rays, those are high frequency wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation. Because they're high frequency, they are high energy. And that's why those are the wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation that cause cancer, because of that high energy 
that, uh, that can damage DNA. Radio waves, microwaves are lower energy and do not uh, damage cells. Planck's equation relates energy to the frequency of, of the, the, the light and Planck's constant. So E in this equation stands for energy, which is measured in joules. H is Planck's constant, which is 6.6262 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. And frequency is measured in hertz. So let's look at how we use this equation to uh, calculate the energy of a given uh, wavelength or frequency, I should say, of light. Okay. Example one, find the energy of a red photon, which has a frequency of 4.57 times 10 to the 14th hertz. So what do we know? We're trying to figure out energy but we know the frequency and we know Planck's constant. So doing our work, we've got E equals HV or H nu. So we're going to multiply 6.62 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds times 4.57 times 10 to the 14th hertz. And remember, hertz is the same as one over seconds. So those seconds cancel out with those seconds, which is why you are left with joules as your final answer. So if you do the math, again, with scientific notation, multiplying two numbers together, I like to multiply the two coefficients together first, where you get 30 point three to three sig figs times 10 to the, and you add the exponents together. So negative 34 plus 14 is negative 20. But this is not correct scientific notation because my coefficient is not between one and 10. So I'm gonna move the decimal point one time and I'm gonna get 3.03, .03, but because I moved the decimal point to make the number smaller, I have to increase my exponent. I'm gonna add one to my exponent. Negative 20 plus one is negative 19. So my final answer is 3.03 .03 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Let's do another example. The frequency of a wave with 1.78 times 10 to the negative 15 joules of energy. So I've got, I know my energy, 1.78 times 10 to the negative 15 joules, and I want to know the frequency. Of course, I know Planck's constant because it's a constant, 6.6262 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. And this time I'm calculating new. So I'm gonna do energy divided by Planck's constant. So 1.78 times 10 to the negative 15 joules over 6.6262 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds gives me an answer. I like to do the division first. So I'm gonna get 0 0.26863 times 10 to the Let's see, negative 15 minus negative 34 is really like adding 34. So I'm gonna have 10 to the 19th hertz. This is not correct scientific notation. And I also haven't really considered my sig figs yet. I need to have three sig figs in my answer. One, two, three, so I'm gonna trim here. Also, I need to have correct scientific notation. I need to move my decimal point over one so I have a number between one and 10. So my final answer is going to be 2.69. Now, this number was small, I made it bigger. So to compensate for making it bigger, I have to make the exponent smaller. So it's gonna be 10 to the 18th hertz. Let's do another example. Calculate the energy 
need to know the energy of electromagnetic radiation with a wavelength of 6.24 times 10 to the negative 4 meters. Wavelength. Okay, I was given the wavelength, so I don't know the frequency. And I'm trying to calculate the energy. I do know Planck's constant, 6.6262 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. But I can't calculate the energy if I don't know the frequency. I can't have two unknowns in this equation. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to use the equation that we were using previously, C equals lambda nu. I'm going to have to use the speed of light to help me calculate the frequency. So then I can use the frequency in this equation. So this is a two-step process. I need to know that um, in order to calculate nu, I need to do the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So that's 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second divided by this 6.24 times 10 to the negative fourth meters. And when I do the math, I will get as my answer 0 0.48077 times 10 to the 12th hertz. Now, I could go ahead and round this off now and fix the scientific notation, but this isn't my final answer. This is just my wavelength that I need to go ahead and calculate my energy. So I'm going to leave this now just kind of remembering that my answer should be only be accurate to three decimal places. And I'm going to go ahead and do step two. Now that I know the wavelength, I can calculate the energy as being Planck's constant. I'm sorry. Now that I know the frequency, I can just do Planck's constant times frequency. So E equals Planck's constant times frequency, which is 6.6262 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds times 0 0.48077 times 10 to the 12th hertz, which is 1 over seconds. My seconds are going to cancel out, leaving me with joules as my final answer. And when I do the multiplication, 6... 0.6262 times the 0.48 is going to give me 3.18567 times 10 to the, let's see, negative 34 plus 12 is 10 to the negative 22 joules. This is correct scientific notation, so I guess I was good about being lazy to not move that because then I would have just had to move my decimal point again. This is correct scientific notation, but not correct sig figs. Remember I said we only knew three sig figs in this number. So one, two, three in this number. So three in my final answer. And you should get 3.19 times 10 to the negative 22 joules. I hope this helped.